So yeah, yesterday's uh, keynote um, kind of gave us an introduction about uh, how we be, uh, kind of began. Um, but the, their name tech ego is big tech, little egos. So we try to be humble about it, um, which doesn't come across very well because I'm really not very uh, good at, at uh, presenting that uh, humility. I'm, I'm a forceful speaker and uh, uh, very blunt and, and, and I cut right to the matter of things. But I'm also the type of guy you can uh, you can tell to shut up and basically treat like a brother. So, um, yeah, thanks, Jordan. Uh, Jordan, you're good. I'm gonna kick your ass later. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, so back to this. Um, with that being said, I think that um, what I want to go into here is is really hope that you guys are just absolutely floored and excited with with where we're going with um, the platform. Um, our, our technology, sure, Tech Ego is the consulting side, but um, our platform is actually called thatapp.io. And the whole idea of that app is your apps that you guys are building should have a home where you can connect into systems and functionalities that can extend your platform's capabilities. So in January, we're going to be launching the thatapp.io partner program, which means that as we get customers that come to us for integration services uh, for other systems other than Podio, those are things that we can start to refer to you guys on and, and allow you to use these tool sets as well. Because we have the backup solution, we have the printing solution, we have the AVA automation solution, but starting to pull these in together is, is really a great use case. For example, our Iris extension is just basically a visualization of your calculation fields and relationships. But for us, and we've been talking with Mike about this, is that we would like to upgrade or basically allow people to say, upgrade your iris to have now the Quivi tools complete functionality suite. And in doing so, that is now a subscription for Quivi tools. And it doesn't cost us anything. It's just now extending the capabilities of a platform. Same thing with uh, the auto dialer. Having the ability to do it in Podio is fantastic, but now actually having the opportunity to extend that into other platforms is where we're really going uh, in the future here. So what I wanted to share is this is our current interface, but I wanna show where we're planning on taking this in the next steps and then provide you with an actual real world use case. So right now we have the ability to be able to authorize with Podio and it takes the token and stores it. And this has been great uh, because once it, you authenticate with the system, you can now use that Podio token across all of the, the apps within the system. And we have high rate limits, which is, which is really good and it helps extend that functionality. But we're gonna be transitioning away from logging in with Podio and actually creating accounts and signing up accounts so you can actually have per users and so forth. Um, so signing up for that app, username, password, forgetting the password, and then similar to how we currently have it now with a sync, Ava, print. But in here, we would have additional items that we can add in of, of um, uh, you know, smartphone or uh, Quibi tools or whatever your extension is, where you can actually then authenticate. And similar how you can go deactivate. Um, if I go log in with Podio right now, validates, and then I can then go click and visit Ava. And it just takes me out of the Ava site. And since I'm already authenticated, it, it logs me in there. So in that sense, um, I can then click start syncing and basically gives you a launch point and you can go into your application. So to come back to this, um, some of you have used sync and I think you'll see a, a good leveraging capability on this. Um, the next piece here will be connecting in your, your systems. So once you're in Podio, you've already got that connected. But if you wanna connect in your Salesforce, Shopify or any of the platforms we end up adding in, we're basically turning this into a backup solution and a data lake. So all of your all of your platforms that you connect in here, you will end up syncing 100% of that data into one centralized location. And in doing so, we're able to leverage that data um, with great ease. So here would be an authorized Podio. And then once you're in Podio, you can see now the interface and that you currently see. But the idea here is to be able to switch between Salesforce and Shopify and so forth. So in doing this, uh, we have the, the ability to sync an organization, resync organizations, 
and actually see which uh, organizations have FileHaven, which is our file backup solution to show that all the files are being protected as well. And you can then disable protections. We can protect all organizations. And a lot of you that have used this uh, right here, the raw data um, aggregated pipeline feeds. What this does is once your system and whole entire organization is backed up, now all that data is available via URL and we're going to be implementing an API around that where it'll just basically use token authentication so you can actually securely get that data and then put that into Glowyflow or um, trim the trim the, act to the, the feed down or actually create or merge data or mesh your data together from other systems or other orgs or other workspaces to be able to create a new data feed that can then get sent out into other systems. So our iris, this is what I'm speaking about here. Us, we just have the visualization. Uh, but for Quibi tools, this is where we'd say, okay, well, we want, I don't want to go out and build all this. I don't want to keep spending money on, on building something or rebuilding something that Mike has done incredibly well. So for us, we want to say, okay, well, we want to upgrade this. And now here comes the, the Quibi tools integration where it would actually link to its existing site and people can then just have a good launch point. So it's that kind of working together functionality that's going to be really, really critical and important. At the app level, when you come into apps, we can click on sync and actually resync a specific app instead. Um, but also, once you have all the data and your system's connected, if you want to actually copy an entire app or anything from one system to another system, you can definitely do that. Um, the ability to upgrade accounts, uh, the ability to have additional team members adding a team member, inviting that team member if they're a partner and what level status you want them to have. If a partner, if you're added as a partner, you'd be able to see other, like the, the organizations that you manage, you'd be able to access and actually um, imitate that part of that account so that you'd be able to help that customer with their specific platform problem. But when you're in here, you can actually add who has access to what platforms you actually have backed up in that data. So that way you can make sure that this person only has access to, you know, Podio or uh, no access to Salesforce, but access to QuickBooks and the Shopify accounts and data. So in here, you can then be able to set the user admin for what data sets you want. So let's say I've completely just backed up my Shopify instance and we're launching this uh, this next month and Salesforce will be in December. So each month we're planning a rollout of a brand new uh, platform that we'll be able to um, back up completely into one organization. So once your uh, Shopify is connected, then you'd be able to have every Shopify order, all of your customers, all those details, all the files and everything pulled in from one system. And then you can see that this is paid, fulfilled, um, item is not synced and item is synced for orders and so forth. So the, the where we're going with the products and customers and, and, and how we're starting to pull this in together, it is the future of how automations need to be done in the sense of there's, in the same way that the iPaaS platforms have taken uh, the ability to take data from platform A to put it in platform B, that's fantastic. But being able to take all of your data and migrate it from one platform to another platform or extending that functionality is huge. Um, we're trying to build this in such a way that as, as partners, you can take and build your own extensions um, instead of writing development code, a ton of development code, it can all be done within inside of Ava, for example. So in here, I'll give you a quick example of what you will be seeing next week at the Converge conference uh, and, and how the Citrix workspace team will be announcing um, kind of Ava as a iPaaS solution to extend um, uh, convert, uh, extend workspace beyond what it's currently connected and capable of doing. Um, and so I'm thinking that uh, this would be a good thing to show you here. But every, all the functionality you see inside of here, um, you know, for example, that app.io, I can hit refresh and resync my organization. It's gonna build the app, build everything. This is all handled through Ava at the same time. And since we have live updates in the system and, and, and capabilities within here, if I go into that app and I'll go to, let's say the Converge, I can click on my requests app and now I have all the data here. I've got four items, right? So I can then click on, you know, I wanna see this uh, Home Depot route item. Um, 
or let's say actually it was 53, this Rockefeller Center. If I click on that, it will actually show me, here's the item. And if I wanted to make a change to this item, let me go ahead and put in here, let's say the owner is, if I can come in here, I'll say, you know what, it is a violation. Okay, the second I do that, you can see that it's automatically changed the item inside of Podio. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this item. All right, cool, now I'm back to deleted. And in here, I can just click on deleted items. That web hook was just triggered off. I can see all of my deleted items. Here's that deleted item. If I come back into active, so I'm only showing three, I can come back to the deleted item and say, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and restore this. And sure enough, item is restored back exactly the way it needed to be. And there we go. And you can see it has a new number, 54, restored common history. So that's how simple it is to download, um, refresh, restore items, activate items inside of here at the dashboard level. If we come back to the dashboard, I can click on audit, for example. And inside of audit, I can actually um, have all of my control over the system. And this isn't just audit for, we had to build a lot of the, the core components that would allow us to control other systems and platforms. So uh, in Shopify or whatever else it may be, um, or even uh, Salesforce, having the ability to be able to control and see who has access to what is, is quite critical. So for example, here I can see COVID-19 um, or even this converged space, I can see the tow requests and the tow but it gives me the app IDs, it gives me the space IDs, it gives me how many items, how many fields, how many number of files are associated with it. And I can actually hit refresh here on this. Um, if I wanna take this a little bit further and say, okay, I wanna go to members here, I can then come to you know, the COVID-19 space. I can see all of, the, uh, all of you guys inside of this COVID space. Uh, but let's say I wanna make uh, Bill Caravino an admin. I can click on that and say yes. And uh, now he's, not, you know, he's gonna be set up as an admin. He'll get that notification. Um, if I wanna remove them or remove them from this space or even refresh the user or ban them completely from the organization with one click, you're able to do that. In the logging, we're able to show item updated successfully. So this is real time information of how all of your data flows. Uh, when, whenever an item update is created or anything changes, it's changes within the system as well. So to go back to this request app, Okay, so right here I've got uh, what uh, five items here. I'm gonna go ahead and submit a new request that I created for the, um, the Citrix workspace. Um, inside of here, let me come to. So for Citrix workspace, we basically created a Uber for tow, co tow truck companies that um, I'll, I'll show this right here. There we go. Go ahead and present this. Actually, this will be a lot easier if we do it this way. Okay, so what we presented for Citrix Workspace is, and then for the Converged Conference, is if a customer is broken down, they're going to make a phone call into a dispatch center, and that's going to be handled inside of Workspace via a, a Workspace app, which is this micro app here, right here. And that data is going to be entered into a field and then upon submission, that micro app looks like this. And this is what I was actually talking about for the interface of Cyto Podio, having the ability to uh, have set it up so you can have side-by-side -side fields and, and data like that, and then to actually be able to see what this would look like on a phone. So this type of interface within Workspace, I think would be absolutely beautiful and fantastic to be able to control that functionality. It wouldn't change the apps, but you can see how I have headers, I have line breaks, I have the ability to separate these things into sections that type of capability inside of Podio, in addition to having different buttons for save, submit, or anything else, it's just a game-changing opportunity. So as I fill out this information, we have it going into Ava that's going to do a flow queue. And we have Sync, where data is then stored in basically the data lake. We have Teletrack, which is um, a, a telematics company. And I'll show this right here, where 
this is uh, Teletrack Madman Director, and we're a partner of theirs as well. So we handle Podio and, and tons of other platforms. But in this, we can see every single vehicle on the screen. And so being able to dispatch, we are taking this uh, Teletrack and we want to create a job site for this brand new order. This is the vehicle that's broken down. We want to go ahead and create a job site over here in Teletrack. But one of the, the shortfalls of workspace is that inside of a credential, if I submit this app, because I'm using my user account, there's no way to have one app controlled by multiple users. So if I submit it, it's only going to use my credential. But if somebody else submits it, it's not going to use their credential on my one workflow. And so each person needs to be able to use this and then set up their own credentials, but they don't have the ability to use credential swapping. Inside of Ava, you do. And so we showed off that demo of how we can actually do credential swapping here. So within sync, because we have all the credentials synced here, we can do credentials, bind the user credentials together. Now you can see in here, I created actually a Podio item, this Rockefeller Center that shows the requests and the dispatches. And all the data is still going to flow into Citrix Cloud. So why would we use Podio? Well, Citrix Cloud is actually just all cached data. You can actually, they don't store it and it can get flushed. And, and it's really just only for things to be acted upon. And so that crossover, you'll begin to see that pretty soon. So in Teletrack, we have an asynchronous vehicle snapshot. So basically every three minutes is a cron job to go get all the vehicles inside the system and store it within sync. And then we can do, uh, you know, all those vehicles are in here. When we come down, we can create, you know, get the credential. We create the Podio item so it shows that it's actually been created by that user. Um, we sync the dispatch process, and we actually once it's uh, once it's been synced, um, we process the dispatch request by going and getting all vehicle locations through a simple one-line MongoDB query. Instead of calling an API, we can now query every vehicle and get an exact location of how far away it is from that location and how long it's going to take. At this next step, we do a router and AVA. They would actually send the service action back to Workspace to say, this is the closest uh, vehicle. We then create the dispatch record inside of Podio as well. And then we dispatch a driver. So we'll go take that, push that out to Teletrack and actually send it to a vehicle GPS Garmin unit. The location actions here, anytime a vehicle is driving now, it'll give location-based access. And because we created that geo site, once they enter into that site by 100 yards, it's going to send out a location access that the tow truck drivers now has arrived on site. And we can then sync those vehicle location pings are automatically being done every minute to our sync database. And then we can just fetch those updates going into sync and then putting it out that way. So once the fresh driver updates have been done, we post those updates to uh, Workspace again and also to Podio. So you can see that there's these two systems start to work in tandem with each other. Uh, basically that intake form is basically a Podio web form, to, so to speak. So in bringing those two systems closer together, we'll have a greater functionality um, and I, I think a very bright future as well. So once these uh, post driver updates uh, are dispatched, the text and email is sent to the customer stating your dispatched, uh, your tow truck has been dispatched. This is how far away he is. And this is where he's uh, current ETA is going to be. And then the next step would be a secondary flow to let's say have a webhook trigger when a customer completes a, a tow, they wanna invoice the customer. Um, you can do that through a webhook trigger, creating a customer and taking it into QuickBooks. And so having that QuickBooks all within one system and then creating the customer, handling the invoice, creating the invoice and invoicing them, sending the invoice to the customer. So as you can see here, the different platforms and systems we've got right now, Globy Flow is fantastic at handling Podio to Podio and even into SQL, MySQL. Um, the proc view functions are fantastic as well. But when you start to break out from that, you need the ability to have extra tool sets that are gonna be able to support that. So in doing the aggregated pipelines to be able to see, okay, I wanna see this, all this data right here as a get raw data. I wanna be able to take this web feed and I wanna go ahead and put this into Globiflow and I wanna automate based on it. Well, there you go. You don't even have to call Podio. You can back up your entire organization 
and have it in the system, right? So I'm going to go ahead and dispatch really fast just via this postman call. Um, go ahead and send in this, this call real quick. There we go. So that's now been dispatched and Ava has received that request, um, right? Where's Ava? I don't think I've got her up here right now. But um, so Ava's received that request and is processing it. Go ahead real fast. Dispatch updates, tow request converge. So a few seconds ago that went through and ran. And what I can see in here is I'll go to request. And there is this new request, which is uh, Rally, North Carolina, which I submitted. Created it a couple of seconds ago, and then Ava came through and it says Danny QT 100 is 120 miles away from Raleigh, North Carolina, the Citrix's office in North Carolina, and has been dispatched for Seth Helgeson and can be reached at my number and emailed at this number. So this is obviously a calc field, but this is the same thing that the Podio or the micro app is actually accomplishing, is be able to send out that dispatch and have all the information and a related dispatch pulled together so I can see all the related items. And in this sense, now this item contains another item. And if I refresh here, we can see that we now have live updates of that item has been received and is now within the system. And if I make an update or change to that whatsoever, there's South North Carolina, it will then be updated inside the system as well. So the idea here and say, you know what, I need to come in here and change this to green. Boom, I'll go ahead and click there. I can see the color's already made to green. So by bridging these systems together and solving some problems, you're able to start leveraging these platforms to, to a next level that has never been known or never been seen before. And if, if I can't speed up your processes and how you're able to help customers faster, then I failed. Uh, because I have been in those shoes where it's it's three in the morning and I'm exhausted and I have to either do three more lines of cocaine or, uh, which I've never done, but it, you, you see where I'm at, is that sheer desperation. If you had it, you would take it uh, because you have to get those things completed for customers. And if, you know, this, I think, uh, starts to allow, uh, in my personal opinion, if if it gets to the point where you're that stressed, then it's too difficult. And if the platforms right now are impeding your ability to quickly and rapidly get things done uh, for you, then let's start breaking down those barriers. And you know, even with, you know, you don't have to wait for a daily or a weekly or anything like that. Um, the one thing that we are focused upon, as well as this new design, is when we click on add a new item, you know, we can add a new item in here. And it would actually create the item inside of Podio, but we don't want to become a competitor to um, this system, right? We don't want to be a competitor to Podio. We don't want to be a competitor to anybody, really. We just want to be able to aggregate uh, systems and people being able to work from a backup solution. Um, so that way they can pull data from a, a data lake and then write it to, uh, let's say, Salesforce. But because they also have their Salesforce connected, we then get that hook feed and we then pull it back in and, and so it's a full circle sync. And so similar to um, workspace, Citrix workspace, having that ability to orchestrate is great, but we're not planning on doing the, the, this orchestration piece of, of having you know, uh, notifications show up and all these other things there, because there's really a lot of great things that other companies do, but being able to take that data and then aggregate it out to other systems and platforms is, is highly useful. I know that I just power steamed through that, um, and I'm very sorry if if you guys' are, heads are spinning a little bit. So I'm going to open it up for the next uh, 15 minutes, and I'd like to hear questions, thoughts, um, things that you think would be beneficial or and helpful as well. Is this thing on? Oh yeah, can you unmute them? Sorry. 
I'm not, I'm not able to see the race. Yes. Standings. Yes. Who would you want me to, uh, Jordan? Yeah, Jordan or others. I mean, I, I'm happy if everybody's unmuted. They can just ask questions. It doesn't matter to me. All right. Give me one second. All right. There you go. Hey, Seth. All right. Um, no, I mean, this is, this is really, really, really very interesting stuff. I mean, I've, I've seen a little about it. And I know that, um, you know, uh, certainly within our team, Andrew is working with you right now, I believe, on, on integrating this sort of stuff. Um, in terms of, you know, in terms of the ease of, of adding in new systems as you go, I mean, you and I have talked about bringing smartphone into this system mm -hmm. uh, as well. And of course, you know, that's my primary concern. But where we get these sort of niche products out there, how easy is it for us to you know, to, to expand the uh, uh, capabilities to new systems. Yeah. So the way that we're moving forward with that, we actually, we we're partners with a company called dream factory as well. Um, and this is our instance of dream factory. It's, it's pretty dang expensive uh, for an annual membership, but um, the way that this works is this is how we're able to control the meshing of the data uh, across platforms as well. So, for example, um, if you wanted to create an application, so we have apps here, and um, if we created an app, I could uh, create a new one and it says, let's say, smartphone, right? No and way, no way. So, you know, yeah, but I could put all this in here, and then I could say this is on a remote URL, and I could put in the URL that customers would be part of. I can assign the roles. I can create all the roles here and save. And what that does is it actually creates an API key that is then allows each of the users that sign up here will have a role in the user capability. And then at that point, we simply are transferring that user's information over to you. And inside of the services, we have the ability to then have um, a single sign-on of Okta or SAML. Um, we can connect into Excel sheets and turn an Excel document into an API. Um, we can do OAuth, uh, all these types of OAuth and LDAP. And so really any type of service you have, even if you have existing scripts that you're currently hosting, we can put scripts, those scripts into this system, whether, you know, Python 3 script or whatever it may be. And then you can actually just host those scripts here for your platform. And so the ability to spin up something that, let's say you have a, uh, a workflow that you really, really love, or even an app pack, right? If you come into, for example, this in, inside of Ava, we have the ability to now take flows that are, let's say this vehicle snapshot or this Townsend request, tow request, or this, yeah, this tow request right here, I can export it as a recipe. And once it's exported as a recipe, I'm able to then say, okay, I want to activate uh, this. Got a lot of people, uh, yeah. Here's the information that you know is for this um, this recipe and how it needs to be uh, set up and where it needs to get uh, deployed to. And at this point, now your app pack that somebody is installing, uh, first off, you'll be able to have a, a marketplace where you, somebody can purchase it, install it, and then have an Ava flow and everything be cloned into that user space to be able to control. So this type of system where we can have this app, it doesn't actually have to be, it wouldn't be merged into our UI. It's simply that smooth transfer of we're sending this customer and this payload over to your system and they're gonna be able to log into it and start utilizing it. But in your backend, you'd be able to start calling and making API calls to those data feeds that customers use because it is real time. Thanks. So extending, you know, existing platforms, this is something that can be leveraged and it's something I'm happy to discuss one-on-one -on -one with people and, and be able to aggregate. But um, if I were to come to, I uh, just want a quick example, the, uh, let me come into that app. I'm going to go to this COVID-19. I'll just go to the state data. Okay. So get raw data here, right here. This is the items and you can see it's for app, um, you know, app, app ID, this. Well, this filters down items for only this specific app. And that's all of my, you know, every state data. But if I want to say, you know, I want all items. 
you can filter down to an item ID and get specifically only that item ID, or you can click on that and, and make a change to it and it will then get all the app items. So I'm gonna go ahead and come back here, put that in there, and I'm gonna go ahead and take one of these item IDs. Let's see, right here, let's just take this first one. Let's just do item. Oops. I love it when it doesn't uh, copy what you want. Let's do not all of it. Work with me here. You know, examples of when it's faster just to uh, type it out. And there you go. So be able to take these pipelines of all of your data and, and see those changes and, and updates uh, in real time, and then even have the ability to uh, pivot on this data is quite critical. Hi, is that, is, it's Nicholas um, here. Yep. Um, how, uh, first of all, incredible thing. Uh, uh, I really like this. Um, how, how easily could you, um, use this to copy a whole organization with all its data. So not only structure, but also the data um, from one organization to an, a new organization. So, and, and yeah, you just copy the whole thing. It's, would that be possible? Very easy. So all we do is come in and do a sync. I could then, let's say, grab this ADS Phoenix and start. Um, and then as we have the restore capabilities, uh, it's it's going out and building everything, but um, all we do is we designate if it's basically cloning an entire org. Uh, yeah. That's simple because we're just basically creating it and rebuilding each uh, space, app, item, and 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 everything. Um, so this is basically going to recreate it just like that restore process did. Um, we've we've set it up to do exactly that because of Podio to share files. So if you have customers that want to download and back up their entire Podio system and then migrate it over to a share file instance. Um, you can do that automatically. And this will back up the share file instances as well. So if I understand you well, this was three clicks, I counted. Is that correct? Yep. If it's if it's over three clicks, or if it's over five clicks is two. Yeah. Uh, three to five clicks is what we're always aiming for, no matter what. If you can't access what you need within three to five clicks, it is too complicated and needs to be rebuilt. Please tattoo that on your chests. And uh, any any experience how long it takes if you have like 50 apps with average of 50,000 items all interlinked, would that be probably a few hours? Or I'm always going to default to a day. So or a few days, probably. Yeah. No, no. I always default to a minimum of 24 hours, given all the variables. Okay. Yeah, it's, because... all, it's fully automated. So, I mean, this, this, the, the cloning process is it's nothing has to be done manually, just boom. Yeah. So that, that interface, that new interface of, of being able to clone an item or copy apps to other systems is um, that's, that's happening in our next update where you can take a, uh, for example, we have a lot of customers who are using Shopify and, and we've been building Podio workspaces to host all this data in, but they never use the Podio workspace. They just basically, you've been using the Podio space as a backup. So for us, we're looking at it as, well, you can create it as, you can take your backup and create it as a Podio space and have all of your share Shopify data synced into Podio, or you could have all your Shopify data synced into Salesforce. Um, but this whole syncing process does away with the need for automations by by allowing you to map values of if it's an A, put it over into B, and then controlling, uh, you know, basically that syncing process rather than writing code of, you know, all those if thens this that. I love it. Thanks. All right, Seth. Uh, Kimberly had a question. Yeah, Kimberly. Yeah, I was wondering if you could. Um just go into a little more detail. So for example, last night I, I set up um, a workflow where a person, I have a person filling out a Podio web form and then I need those file attachments to go to Dropbox. So is that something that happens more seamlessly in 
in that app or is it something that where we would bring outside um, outside workflows in? It sounds like it could replace some of the things that we use, um, you know, have, where we have to go outside to, to Zapier or Integromat mm -hmm. to, to get access to some of those systems. Does, does yours um, allow us to do some of that more internally? Yeah, so as we continue to marry these systems together and we had them as separate disparate you know, platforms as we develop them, but now that we're actually taking this into a community of a tool set for companies, um, inside of Ava, we have the ability to have Box and Dropbox um, and even you know, OneDrive and, and um, there's OneDrive. So as we have all these connectors in here, um, specifically for files, if we come into, I'm losing my track here, if we come into File Haven now, I can see that this ADS Phoenix is uh, currently protected. Um, I can then disable, or sorry, I'm going to enable protection for this uh, ADS Phoenix. By clicking that, it's now going to download everything. But we're building an interface that will allow us to control if a file is created inside of this space, inside of this org, it will then create the file folder inside of um, OneDrive or Dropbox based on the space and based upon the app, it's gonna then auto categorize your folders into that same setup and system. And so in that, um, being able to just basically have a visual designer instead of having to go and actually set up an automation, you're able to back up a customer's data and offer them a backup solution that you can then log into and manage and help them with their data. And then you can also set up their file syncing to be able to have their files organized in the structure that they need them to be um, over in platform ABC or whatever, whichever one you'd want to, to do that within. So if that's, a, if that's a big priority, which I know that that's something that we've done probably about 15 times for customers of being able to manage those, those file syncings, that type of interface is, is gonna be critical and, and we're very excited to start rolling that out quickly. Yeah, that, that does sound good. So you can do, when you said that you can control, are you able to, um, so I have the one I, again, the one I built last night, I, I have to, you know, based on the, they go into different folders based on the setting, the created. category they choose. Mm -hmm. So, um, so is it, so just so I understand you, it does do not just a backup, but also um, a more specific, um, more specific routing of files into Dropbox or, or wherever? Yeah, because if you have, a, it's, it's kind of like a rules engine there. Because the data flows into our system live, like as it's created or as it's updated, it's automatically pulled into the system. That data then is, will show up inside of, um, you know, once a file comes in, it's going to check and see exactly where that file needs to get routed to. And it will then just go and place it there in addition to backing it up, right? So it'll stay, stay inside of here, but it will then get backed up. Uh, you can then control with GDPR settings here of how long you want your deleted items to stay inside the system. So every month it will delete any items that have reached the 30 day mark or three quarter or three month mark or six month mark, ensuring that you are GDPR compliant for items that have been deleted from within the primary platform as well. So yes, okay. these are all good, good, good examples of, of how we can leverage it. And my dev team is on the, on the call as well. And um, they're really excited about the hearing this type of feedback too.